Every town has a story, a mystery, a crime. A tale that hangs over its residents like a black cloud that bleeds through the decades. My hometown of Alveston is no different. It is 5 p.m. on the 20th of February, 1921, and as the sun sinks beneath the horizon, a young girl dressed in white is stepping out of her front door, waving goodbye to her mother as she heads out along Allison Road to run some errands in town. Her name is Chrissy Venn, a loud, tough 13-year-old girl who is well known to her neighbours. Chrissy, a bubbly child, is always happy to stop and say good day. As she steps out of her front door, she sees her 17-year-old neighbour, Robert, watching her. She waves and calls out hello. Chrissy was big for her age and was in no way phased by walking the heavily wooded path to town at night, alone. She was a brave kid, but even so, the route was only four kilometres. It was only four kilometres, or three miles for the Americans in the audience. By approximately quarter past five, 15 minutes after she'd left home, Charles Purton, a neighbour, sees Chrissy as he is finishing up his field ploughing for the day. At 20 past five, Jay Harps and his brother are ploughing their own field when, all of a sudden, both brothers hear a short, sharp scream. The boys stop, listening. What was that? But they hear nothing else, so they go back to their work, telling their father about it when they return to the house at the end of the day. At approximately 5.30, Miss Porton and Kennedy are enjoying an evening stroll down Allison Road. They walk almost the complete distance of the road and come within 274 metres, or 300 yards for the Americans, of where the Harps brothers claim that they heard a scream. Miss Purton and Kennedy both claimed that they saw no one else on Allison Road that night. Not only that, but they saw absolutely no evidence of any recent passers-by. The road was silent and empty. The sunset came, and Olverston and the surrounding North Motton were plunged into darkness. Hours tick by, and all that is heard from Allison Road is the faint rustling of trees blowing through the icy cold Tasmanian air. Chrissy Venn never made it to town, and she never returned home. Her mother, Eva, goes up and down that road to Olverston all night, desperately calling out her young daughter's name, searching until her body physically couldn't anymore. First thing, the next day, Chrissy Venn is reported missing. Tasmanians are a tight-knit bunch. We always have been. So, as soon as Chrissy is reported missing, a search party consisting of all of the Venn's neighbours, residents from North Morton, Alveston, and investigators from Devonport, begins. They search for nearly two weeks, day and night, plunging themselves into the dense bush of the area, calling out Chrissy's name. But nothing. That is until one day. On the morning of the 1st of March, 1921, 13-year-old Chrissy Venn is found, stuffed inside of a tree stump that is two metres, nine feet, tall, with a diameter of only 40 centimetres, 16 inches. She is still wearing the white dress she left home in, and there doesn't appear to be any physical sign of trauma. Some have argued that her body was mutilated, perhaps with some sort of an axe, but there is no such record of any injury. 
that, and there were also no signs of sexual assault. With nothing else to go on, the leading theory for cause of death becomes suffocation. But it is unclear how. Eva Venn is heartbroken. Her daughter being found in such a state shattered her. And the residents of North Motton in Alveston feel her grief. Immediately, sergeants from Devonport begin canvassing the Venn's neighbours. Someone has to know something. But everyone has an airtight alibi. Well, that is except for one man. George William King, a former policeman and miner, knew Chrissy. The two would often stop and chat as they passed each other on Allison Road. King claims the two always had friendly conversations. But Chrissy's mother claimed that she never liked King, going so far as to say that Chrissy was creeped out by him and only humoured him until she could find a reason to leave the conversation as quickly as possible. But neither King's claims nor Eva Venn's claims could be corroborated. When interviewed by police, King was seen to have several scratches all over his hands and back. Scratches, the police claim, could be from some sort of a struggle. But King claims the scratches came from hoeing the harps fields, a recreational session with his wife, and the search in the dense bush for Chrissy. With only this circumstantial evidence and nothing else to go on, Police arrest King under suspicion of murder, charge him, and he is then taken to the capital city of Hobart to face court. King was defended by soon-to-be Premier, or Governor for the Americans in the audience, Albert Ogilvie, and on the 11th of August 1921, was acquitted of the crime. Detectives never had any other suspects and no substantial evidence ever came to light. All they knew for certain is that a 13-year-old girl ended up in a 9-foot-tall tree stump stuffed into a hole that was 16 inches in diameter. And the only theorised cause of death was suffocation. Chrissy Venn never got justice. Her mother lived and died knowing her daughter's killer would never be caught. And the mystery of what happened to this friendly 13-year-old girl would hang over Alveston for decades to come. To this very day, children in Alveston are told the story of the girl in the tree stump to warn them about the dangers of going out at night alone. And as time has gone on, the naturality of the case has come into question. Ever since the death of Chrissy Venn, many have reported strange occurrences on Allison Road. Everything from a strange, unsettling feeling to seeing a young girl in white on the side of the road. And these sightings go back as far as 1921 and as recently as 2021. For some in Elverston, it is even considered a coming-of-age ritual to go to what they believe to be the tree stump in the middle of the night and walk around it three times and finally walking down the lonely Allison Road into town. In recent years, some have even wondered about cryptids being the culprit. Maybe some unknown creature snatched Chrissy in the night and did that horrible, horrible thing to her. But what do I think? Well, I'm not the most supernaturally inclined. But I will say this. America's myths and monsters are well known. And whilst the States might have its Jersey Devil, Mothmen and Wendigos... Australia's creatures and cryptids 
are far, far worse.